I can give you the, so my top tip, top secret way to find out where to apply to university. It's that time of the year when, uh, actually, although we're still in the admission cycle for this year and haven't yet finalised what the students are going to be that are arriving this year, we're actually already starting to think about next year because there's various things, you know, we actually have to print things and get new copies of, so this is last year's undergraduate prospectus that needs updating and all those kinds of things. And uh, so actually we're already thinking about admissions for next year. And I've, so I've made two videos so far about kind of admissions to university. One was about how to fill in the UCAS form, so when you decided to apply, you know, what the process is for actually applying. And the other was, well, when you've got a bunch of offers from those various places, which one, how you go about deciding which of them you're actually going to go to. But the bit that's missing so far is kind of the first stage of that, which is how you decide where to apply to in the first place. And so in the coming few months, that's the sort of time of the year when people who are just about to start their final year in high school are kind of thinking about, starting to think about where to go to university. Um, and so this is the time to actually do the things you need to do to figure out where to apply to in the first place. So I thought it would be good to make a video just giving a bit of advice about what you should do in order to decide where to go to university. So is this video just going to be you saying the University of Nottingham, the end? Oh, well, well <laughs> obviously. But, um, no, because actually it turns out that, you know, this is a great university, but it's not the right university for some people. And actually, I'd rather they figured that out early in the process. Um, out of fairness to them and so they don't waste a lot of time applying here and it turns out it's the wrong university but actually for selfish reasons as well that we get so many applications that actually if it turns out this isn't the right place for people to come the sooner they figure it out it's better for them but actually it makes less work for us as well so I'm very happy to you know give reasonably objective advice one of the real problems people have is figuring out where to apply and uh, finding kind of credible sources of information about where the best universities are for whatever subject it is. I mean, I'll do things in the context of physics, but most of what I'm going to say is kind of completely generic. It's not really specific to physics. In that, you know, there are things like this, university prospectus, um, which will tell you about our courses, and then, you know, there's not very much about it because it's actually all the courses in the university, so we can't really say much about physics in there. My department puts out booklets like this about, you know, how wonderful our courses and so on, which has, you know, there's factual information in there. But you've got to bear in mind that whenever you see a piece of information like that, it's a PR thing, right? We're actually trying to convince you that this is the right university for you. We're telling you all the wonderful things we do. And I'm sure all my colleagues and competitors around the country are doing exactly the same thing for their departments. So it's not really objective information in that sense. Trying to, you know, trying to use prospectuses or web pages or whatever it is, it's very hard to disentangle where the good places actually are. So where do I go? So again, there's lots of places you might think of going, some of which are good, some of which are bad. Um, so league tables, there are umpteen league tables for absolutely everything nowadays, including how good physics departments are around the country. Unfortunately, they're not very good. Physics departments like to say they're a top 10 physics department, right? There are probably about 30 top 10 physics departments in the country. Are you, are you a top uh, 10? We are indeed a top 10 physics department. But then, so, as I say, so are 30 other places, and they shouldn't be, right? There should be at most 10 top 10 physics departments. But the reason is that there are lots of different league tables, and you can always find the one that puts you in the top 10. And the fact that they're kind of, you know, completely different collections of 10 universities depending on which, univers which league table you're looking at. Plus, actually, even more worryingly, a given league table quite often will show you, tell you what the places of the, of the departments were last year as well. Places jump enormously. There was a place that went from 20th place to 6th place in the league table last year, one of these league tables. The department almost certainly hasn't changed that much on that time scale. Really, this is just telling you that the data that's going into these league tables is pretty much rubbish, which means that the ordering things is fairly random. These league tables, Mark? Mostly newspapers. They use them to sell newspapers with um, because people like league tables, and so if they see there's a league table in this week's newspaper, they'll go and buy the newspaper. But obviously, they're not you know, particularly experts in higher education, and they're basically just taking a whole bunch of published data, coming up with some fairly random algorithm for putting all that published data together, grinding a big handle, ending up generating a number for each university and ordering those numbers. And it really is pretty much a random number generator they end up with at the end of this process. So you're not a fan? So uh, they're fine, you know, there's information, you know, so there's about 40 physics departments in the country. If somewhere's fourth, it's probably better than the place that's 40th. But if somewhere's 15th, it's probably no worse than the place that's 10th. Right? And so actually, it's not a good basis for deciding where to apply to say, well, this place is 10th, so it must be better than the place that's 15th. Because there you're really deciding where to get into university on the basis of random numbers, which is not, again, a good way of doing it. Come on, then, what do I do? So you've got to ask people. Okay, it's my really strong advice. And there are some obvious people to ask who know a bit about universities, school teachers, people who've been teaching you in your subject, careers advisors, uh, parents know a bit about universities. 
Um, but actually, even they're probably not ideal sources of information because it, their information is likely to be rather out of date because their time at university was some time ago. It might be rather subject specific. They know about whatever it was they studied at university, but everything else they probably don't know so much about. And they're probably depending on the league tables. And they might well be looking at the league tables too. I can give you, the, so my top tip, top secret way to find out where to apply to university is to ask universities because each university will tell you they're the best place in the country, obviously. But actually, they say, oh, you know, if you then say to them, okay, fine, where's the second best place? Where's the third best place? Because actually, we know a lot about what's going on in our own subjects. We collaborate with each other on the research side of things. We work together on the teaching side of things. So actually, we have a pretty good overview as to you know, who we're competing with, who the places are that attract our students, who the places are that we're attracting students from. So basically, you know, we have a pretty good sense as to where the good universities are. So asking physics departments is a good thing to do. And there's an opportunity to do that coming up because one of the things that happens over the summer is there's lots of open days around universities. Um, and so it's a very good thing to do. Make sure you do go along, um, check out the open days because you really want to visit places that you're thinking about going to university. Um, but during the course of the open day, there's lots of opportunity to chat to staff. And it sound, it's sort of sounds a slightly pushy thing to do, to say, well, you know, where else are the good places? But it's a really good way of getting some information about where, you know, where the better places to think about applying are. I would have thought that was, it made a bad impression. Like, if I was applying for a job with Business A, mm -hmm. I wouldn't start saying, what do you think it would be like to work at Business B? The nice thing, though, at this stage of the process, is the person you're talking to has no clue who you are. So that when you come to apply in six months' time, they're not going to remember, oh, that's the one who asked me that really obnoxious question, because they don't know who you are. So actually, this is the great time to be asking exactly that question at a time where you have this nice cloak of anonymity that lets you get away with asking those kinds of questions. Young people, young people who are still at school, A, they don't have many opportunities to do that. You point out open days yeah. do present an opportunity, but outside of open days, they probably don't have a lot of opportunities and access to university professors. But also, let's be fair, when you're sort of young and coming towards the end of high school, it's not easy to have those sort of conversations with adults. Is there anything else they can do that doesn't involve being a bit bolshy? I, I agree it is difficult, but actually this is, you know, this is probably the first really adult decision you have to take in your life. It, and it will have significant effects for the rest of your life. And so you have got to be prepared to actually do things, take yourself out of your own comfort zone and start doing these kinds of things to actually really kind of figure out what you want to be doing with your life. So I'm afraid there really is no substitute. You've really got to take that opportunity. It doesn't have to be at open days. I mean, I get asked this question by email once in a while, and when people ask questions about, you know, the university and courses and so on by email, they get a response from me. So you, there are opportunities for find, you know, for getting in touch with admissions tutors and staff at universities other than through the open days. But the questions you should be asking yourself when you're thinking about where to apply, because the thing is, there's a whole range of questions you need to think about. Some of which were obvious, some of which are less obvious. Uh, I mean, you know, the obvious thing is, you know, you look at the course, does it look like it's kind of the stuff that I want to be doing? But you've got to be looking at the bigger picture, like, you know, the reputation of the university. Because ultimately, when you go to get a job after doing your degree, to some significant extent, employers look at the reputation of the university. Is this the kind of university that actually turns out very good graduates and so on? So you want to be looking at that sort of bigger picture question. But then there are more sort of personal questions that there is no particular right answer to, like, um, there's two types of university, right? There are campus universities and the city centre universities. And each has their own advantages, campuses, nice green, pleasant sites to be on, uh, but they tend not to be very close to anywhere in particular. City centre, there's all the excitement of what's going on in the city, plenty of places to live, but they're not such nice working environments. And you have to think about, you know, well, what's important to me? Um, there's the size of the department. I mean, physics departments go from 30 to 300 in terms of the, the number of students they take every year. And again, there's no right answer to this. Very small departments, very friendly, informal kind of atmosphere. Everyone gets to know everyone, so it's nice from that point of view. But the range of things they can teach has to be much more limited because they just don't have enough students to have lots of different things going on at the same time. Other end of the scale, very big departments, lots and lots of different stuff going on. Um, but it has to be that much less friendly and informal. Is it close enough to home? Is it far enough away from home? You know, everyone, and there is no single right answer to this, but these are the kind of questions you have to start thinking about in order to try and kind of you know, narrow down the range of places. Because if you're going to go to these open days, obviously you can't go to 40 open days across the country. You've really got to start narrowing it down to, well, these are the places I'm seriously thinking about, and then kind of targeting them. And so this first stage of the process, you've just got to think about what the issues are that are important to you. I would have thought the million dollar question and the silver bullet was this. What job do I want to do? And the people who have got that job now, where did they go to university? That's a very tough one to answer because, of course, you know, 
I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 17. And actually, I don't think most 17 year olds know exactly what it is they want to do. So most people don't, can't even get to the first stage of that, which is, you know, what's the job I want to do at that point. And in some ways, that's, you know, that's a selling point for physics degrees, right? Because really physics doesn't narrow things down in terms of career options. Um, it doesn't, although it doesn't have an obvious thing that follows on, but it's not like medicine or engineering where you kind of have a career path that might be set out in terms of what you've done as your degree. But the upside is that you sort of haven't narrowed down your options at all by doing it. So th that's a general sales pitch for a physics degree is it kind of keeps those options open. But it's very hard to think about, well, you know, what's the place to go to that will actually optimise my career chances because most people don't actually know what career it is they want to follow at that point. The way the system works is at the end of the year when I'm trying to decide who the last few places should go to, they tend to go to students who kind of stand out.